Okay. Uh, to kick off uh, from the national exam. The next, uh, I'm going to acknowledge uh, the members of the high I acknowledge your name. Please, Joshua, uh, you can raise your hand so that uh, the floor members can know who you are. Please uh, put your hands together for Dr. Abubakar Bafit. That initiated all these movements in person of I need you to get the potential. Oh, thank you. Build the youth, destroy the youth, destroy the youth, no youth, no youth, and this time around, no any force will destroy the youth, inshallah. Auz bil dhamin al-shaytan al-radim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Members of the high table, permit me to stand on the already established protocol, please. A very good morning to you all. I am Adiwi Sujalingo, the founder of One Million Youth Mobilization, Gombe State, an idea which I woke up one day just to realize that it has to be into reality. And I can't make it alone. I have to call on friends from all knock and cranny songs of the state to come stronger together and do it together. Uh, this year, 2022, is a memorable year. And October is a memorable month, and this day is going to be in history, inshallah. As we witness the first mega youth summit under this organization, which we have come a long way, and we still have a long way to go. Standing uh, before you and the people I can see, very young. The handsome men in the house and the beautiful ladies in the house are faces of the next ministers, presidents, state house of assembly members, directors, and everyone. So uh, the solemn of this uh, organization is uh, to foster unity among the youth of Gambia State to overcome the challenges we are facing today. Uh, the theme of the program today is uh, sustainable socio-economic development in Gombe State, the roles of relevant stakeholders. As we invite our resource patients today, and all of you have answered our call, I will say thank you very much for coming. So uh, before I move further, I would like to use this medium to pray for our brothers and sisters that are in sickbed and they cannot be able to make it to this place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, heal them, uh, wish them a very uh, jet recovery. And for those that lost their loved ones, uh, we pray, may Allah to Allah grant them and do not defend those. Uh, today, I will always say today, uh, is the day that people have been making a lot of contributions to see that it come. So Alhamdulillah, here we are today uh, to witness this uh, event. If there is anyone out there who is still doubt that Gombe is a place where all things are possible, who still wonders if the dreams of our foundings is alive in our time, who still cautions the power of youth, tonight or today is the answer. Is the answer told by lines that stretch around the schools uh, our communities in numbers this nation has never seen or Gombe State has never seen by people who waited for more than an hour to just see in the next maybe few hours what will be revealed here I will say a very big thank you by people who many of them this is their first time of witnessing such gathering I will say you learn a lot inshallah because I believe this time must be different. Your voices will be different. Is the answer spoken by the young people, as you can see here today, is the answer that the black among us 
and the fear among us has answered. It's the call which we make that the ladies has answered and the gentlemen has answered. It's the call which we make that our resource person that we can never pay them. We have nothing to pay them. They answered our invitation. We'll say a very big thank you to them. So as I say a very big thank you to you all, I wish you a very successful summit and I wish everyone a safe journey back to his various destination. Thank you very much as you spend some hours with us here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the wonderful speech. Uh, as you can see, a young individual. The person of Anne Marie Cooper. Put your hands together. He is one of uh, the alumni of the State University, as you can see, and also uh, one of the first. Also, among the high tables, we have uh, the Bosa National President. In person of Adam Wina, Federal Polytechnic Kantungu, in person of Mazui, and put your hands together for you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is an opening address by the chairman of the occasion. Uh, may I invite Ibrahim Umar? Also, be lying in a shaitan of Ajia. He is a member of the Association of Nigerian University Public Administrators. He is also a member of Association of Registrars of Nigerian Universities. He has published a lot of academic papers in different journals. He has also presented papers on different occasions. And while he was in the University of Abuja, he has took some courses, he taught some courses on a part-time basis in the Department of Political Science and Department of Public Administration. He began his career in Bauchi College of Arts and Science as an assistant registrar. He later moved to the University of Abuja. Dr. Bafeto was registrar of the Institute of Mining and Geosciences in Jos. He was the pioneer registrar of Federal University of Kashiri. He was the pioneer registrar of Admiralty University in Delta. And currently, he is the registrar of the State University. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you agree with me that he has contributed immensely to the foundations of many universities in Nigeria. And beyond that, he has also contributed in establishing a private university. Recently, a license was granted for the establishment of uh, a university, a private university here in Gombe which you all know is referred to as the Pell Resource University. I would like to inform you that Dr. Avokar Bavito was part of that success. He has contributed immensely to the establishment of that university. Uh, I also want to tell you that uh, through, uh, through his, throughout his career, he has engaged in a lot of community service and he has raised and mentored a lot of young people who are, who are excelling some have excelled and some are excelling in their various fields of choosing and labor, including my humble self standing before you, who is currently a staff of the Federal University of Kashi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Bavieto, as uh, you all know, is very humble and committed to the service of this country. He is happily married with children. This is a brief citation on Dr. Obakar Aliyu Bavieto. Thank you very much. Traditional rulers, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to, on behalf of the organizers of this forum, to welcome you to this historic occasion. As far as I'm concerned, this occasion is historic. Maybe not because it is one of the major outings of the association, if it is an association, but simply because of the ambition to mobilize one million youth in Gombe State. And this mobilization is not to mobilize youth for other political activities or on behalf of any party or on behalf of any political individual, but rather 
It is an ambition to mobilize 1 million youths for the socio-economic development of Gombe State. The fact that 1 million youths have been mobilized for the socio-economic development of Gombe State, I think is very, very historic. Uh, while delivering the welcome address, I, I was expecting that the objectives of the association will be highlighted. In any case, I'm not aware whether the association has been holding forums like this before. But it, if, if it is not, and even if it is, I think it is very important that the objective of the association should be highlighted, which is very lofty and very noble. The desire to mobilize one, hand, I mean one million news for socio-economic development is a noble objective. And as I can glean, as I glean from the invitation letter submitted to me by the association, uh, the, the, the mission is to foster unity and understanding among the youth of Gombe State, irrespective of religious affiliation, tribal affiliation, uh, area of origin or whatever, that the objective of the association is to mobilize youth, to bring them together so that they can harness their energies for the socio-economic development of Gombe State, irrespective of political party or whatever. This is a noble objective and I think the association should always be repeating this objective. Uh, other objective of the association is to breed responsible and transparent leaders. The aim is to train the youth to become responsible and transparent leaders in the future. Other objectives of the association include the instillment and the, uh, the, the, the struggle to instill the idea of good governance and accountability in our society. These are noble and lofty objectives that I think any noble association should aspire uh, to propagate in the society. And wherever you see the youth struggling this time around for the socio-economic development of the entire society, not to work for a political party or for an individual to achieve his personal objective, then I think it's a good development that the youth are thinking in the right direction. Uh, for the students of history and sociology, I want to refer us to Franz Fanon in his book, The Record of the Us. For those of you who have read it, Fanon, a very vehement anti-colonialist struggler, he said, out of relative historical obscurity, every generation must discover its mission. The assignment is either to fulfill that mission or to betray it. I am happy that the conveners of this association has discovered out of this relative historical obscurity that they have a mission to accomplish. What is that mission? The mission is socio-economic development of Gombe State. The mission is to fight, is to fight poverty against poverty. The mission is to bring development. The mission is to instill good governance. The mission is to bring educational development to the youth. This is the mission that has been discovered. The assignment now is either to fulfill that mission or to betray it. So I hope the convenors of this mission, I mean of this uh, forum, uh, have designed strategies by which the association can succeed in instilling the objectives, in achieving the objectives, the mission and objectives of this association. Thank you very much for that. Uh, as you can see through the program, a lot of things have been lined up. There are a lot of paper presentations. We have some eminent scholars that will educate us on a lot of issues. I can see the police, certainly it has to do with security. The NDLE will talk to us about drug addiction and some other vices that we should avoid. For us as a responsible use, we should avoid all these vices so that we can rightly assume the leadership that rightly belong to us. Uh, I want to urge and call on you to be attentive, to listen, and at the end of the day, I hope what we have picked here will go and translate it in the socio-economic development of the society. Thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm.
by the registrar and uh, if you are here when the citation was read, you would not be surprised to hear even uh, this kind of details from him. Another round of applause for him, please. You know, anytime we are in Gombe State University, there's this joke we crack. Uh, your motto is Primus. Inter what? Anyhow, you call it. Some of you used to say Inter some of you used to say Inter Paris. But all we know is that at Federal University Kashi, we are having education to become what? To become what? Global citizens. So this event is possible because of your infrastructure, but it is even more detailed because of our human resources. If you look at the registrar in the citation, they told you he was a registrar from Frey University. Actually, that is where he got the experience to come and give you the uh, uh, administrative skills you're having in this university. And even among the guest speakers, you also have a lot of resources in Well, how about to So I want to acknowledge the presence of the guest speaker. But we say we are famous in our We are best among the first. Also, the second speaker. So ladies and gentlemen, Represented by Al Hadi Yusuf Jalingo Matawalin Tula, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. Please permit me to stand on the established protocol. It is with great pleasure that I address this important gathering at the occasion of the Maiden Youth Summit organized by the One Million Youth Mobilization Gombe State with the team Social, Sustainable Social Economic Development in Gombe State, the role of stakeholders. The summit is most appropriate coming shortly after the recent celebration of the United Nations International Day of the Youth. The focus of the summit on aspects of sustainable socio-economic development relating to common vices affecting our youth, such as drug abuse, political thuggery, insurgency, education, and general youth restiveness. Among others, is also highly commendable and reassuring. In Nigeria today, youth remain an important section of our society and are critical agents of change and national development. Currently, the youth constitute 60% of Nigeria's population and 35 to 40% of them are unemployed. Despite their huge potentials, the Nigerian youth have progressively been marginalized. In terms of socioeconomic inclusiveness, capacity development, and empowerment. It is therefore important to note here that our youth are known to be innovative, creative, intelligent, restive, impatient, have poor resource base, and lack knowledge, information, and education. They also lack access to financial services due to inability to pay legislative collateral. They, also, they are also not engaged in policy dialogue on issues that concern them. 
various government policies and programs have over the years put in place by the federal, state, and local governments, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector. But a lot more needs to be done, particularly as regards the conceptual framework and strategic implementation strategies needed to harness and address these huge potentials and highly restrictive constraints of our youth. Here lies the importance and contributions of the one million youth mobilization. You have a huge tax achieving the 500 targeted beneficiaries in Gombe State in terms of advocacy, sensitization, education, policy dialogue, resource mobilization, partnership, and intellectual engagement to generate ideas, solutions, and support for youth. I want to assure you that Gombe State University administration under the able leadership of our amiable, dynamic, focused, and result-oriented <laughs> Vice Chancellor, <laughs> Professor Aliyu Usman El Nafati, the university has over the years demonstrated commitment, support, encouragement, and creation of the needed enabling policy environment for all students who are likely youth to develop their full potentials and initiatives as future leaders and entrepreneurs in various sectors of the economy of Gombe State and that of the nation at large. The initiative of the One Million Youth Mobilization is therefore a welcome development and should be encouraged and supported to achieve their development objectives and implementation of youth-related projects and programs. It is also heartwarming to note that the summit will create an interdisciplinary platform for robust discussions and paper presentations by renowned scholars and public affairs analysts on contemporary youth-related issues such as drug abuse, toggery, banditry, youth restiveness, and socioeconomic development solutions. Let me seize this opportunity to advise one million youth mobilization, Gombe, and the summit to also consider exploring youth development potentials locked up in the socioeconomic sector, such as agriculture and information and communication technology. The agriculture subsector presents a good platform where youth can be engaged in various enterprises along the value chains of production, processing, marketing, transportation, and agro-input shops management, and many more. The ICT also offers great potentials for youth engagement, targeting their intellectual capacity and innovativeness. However, what is important in all these efforts is the political will and provision of enabling policy environment 
by government to sustain initiatives such as those of the one million mobilization. Finally, let me also seize this opportunity to urge your organization to ensure that your beneficiaries include the physically challenged youths and women in our society who I believe need your support the most. On this note, I wish to declare the maiden summit of one million youth mobilization Gombe State open and wish you successful deliberations and forward for youth and women development in Gombe State. Thank you for your attention. Uh, the registrars are other distinguished fellows of the high table permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Although I was not timed, I was not given the duration of how many minutes to spend in discussing the theme given to me. However, I will try as much as I can to see that I digest the little I have for the consumption of my fellow youth within the next 10 minutes, God's will. Well, um, they say, or they titled the summit as One Million Youth Mega Summit. But the way I look at it is over 32.6 million mega summit. Some may ask why I have to believe the followers of Babo Yosule, Dr. Babo Yosule, with due respect, on both social media and conventional media across the globe may easily listen or have this message in their own ears and they can easily digest to use it for future use. So there is no restriction, but uh, the title or the tag or the theme of this particular summit, to be frank and to be sincere, is timely. And we look forward to seeing this kind of uh, gatherings, summit of youth, where the youth, people like uh, Dr. Babo Yosule, I will continue to be cited reference with him. He is within the youth exuberance age, and you know his contribution. We want to see a lot of youth copying from him, serving as unconscious mentees from what he is doing, so that we can continue to have those that will also proliferate what he is doing, and what people like us, that are opportune, the Fulanis, the Bororos, that are opportune to acquire the Western education can also share with you guys. So the title of my presentation is Providing Quality and Affordable Education as a Tool for Sustainable Economic Development. The title, if you look at it, which uh, I can say, due respect to our distinguished scholars here, is so vast. And if it is to be digested from the beginning to the end, it may easily take us the whole of the day. So I, I, I try to just segregate it into just two or three components so that each and every one of us among the youth can easily see where he fits in, where he can also contribute, and what are the possible prospects he will reap after contributing participating and where he keys in. When we talk of social economic development, each and every one of us knows what we mean. It is the sociological aspects of you, interaction between you, yourself, your colleagues and the environment, and then the economic activity that you engage in in order to get one kobo, two kobo, or three kobo for the, few, for the sustenance of what you can easily take care of by yourself. What, am, what did I mean by taking care of, of yourself? buying cloth, as you all know, taking food as you like, paying your school fees, or even contributing for your parents to pay their school fees. But how would education help in doing this? Most of the times, when we talk about the concept of education, people think it only ends up from going to class, receiving lectures, or staying within the four walls of school. But it goes beyond that. And that's why proponents of quality education perceive it or define it to be 
education for life. What do you mean by education for life? The type of training, the type of coaching, the type of mentorship, the type of thoughts you have in terms of developing yourself in these three components that we all know in education. Those that are studying education knows that we have three domains that facilitate individual capacity. What are they? The cognitive domain, the psychomotor domain, and the other one, which is what? The affective domain. So if education is given in such a way that it takes care of all these three domains, then it is out there to be termed as quality. But the quality will not end up except and until it takes care of all the different peculiarities we have. That is to say, the education given to take to improve our affective, improve our psychomotor, and improve our cognitive domain must also not must also be inclusive in such a way that it doesn't take any barrier in terms of religion, in terms of ethnicity, in terms of socio-economic background, in terms of location or what have you. That is to say, that particular education is going to be for all. That's why even the United Nations in 2015 come up with a particular theme which they tag as education for all. But we are not able to achieve that. And now, Sustainable Development Goals 1, 2, 3, the number 4 is talking about quality education, which me and you are supposed to be proponents of that particular SDG and also contribute our quarter towards ensuring that the education is qualitative one and at the same time is affordable, but not in the kind of era that we find ourselves now, where for almost about eight months now, our universities, the engine room of producing educational proponents are closed. So what are the challenges that usually hinders Nigeria in achieving this kind of quality education that we just defined? They are mainly categorized into three aspects. I don't want to dwell in much uh, rhetoric, but rather I'll only look at the three aspects. One is the policy issue. This policy, these policy issues are usually being designed, implemented, and monitored by the government agencies. And these government agencies, if you can uh, look at it from the federal, state, and local government, are not giving high priority to ensuring that quality education is given to our team in youth. Right from the basic education, if you can take it primary, pre-primary, primary education, junior secondary school education, and even the secondary school education now. It may baffles you to know, although you are all aware and you are party to it, where the results, or I can say the scores of both JAM and uh, WAEG and NEPO have been reduced to the BRS NEMO from what we call the cut-off point during the examination marking. Do you know that you can have a credit in English now by scoring only 20 over 180? You don't know that. But we always celebrate that uh, we have high number of students that graduate from secondary school with five credits and above. They can easily get, uh, uh, en uh, they can get entry into the university, but after our graduation, what normally happens? So the policy design from the government, the policy implementation from the government, the mechanism of evaluating these particular policy programs are faulty, and in that, quality education is at stake. We hardly get it. How could you rate yourself for example, you that are studying in a university now, I have an associate professor near me who possibly spent over 20 to 30 years trying to achieve where she is. And the policy says she cannot get up to a one million naira in her corpus at the end of the month, despite the fact that she is a head of department. And you will discover that even a particular interest required for her to run that office is not given to her, and at some point, the money she collects as her salary is part of what she is. Graduate this, but I'm a good advocate of intellectualism. And thank God, one million my youth match for peace and whatever is intellectualism. So in this regard, we are unparalleled. So we are still together, <laughs> but not from the other perspective. Well, thank you very much. The issue of uh, youth involvement in political progress, of course, has effect on social economic development of this country. In essence, anything that touches on youth is directly touching the future and the heart and the liver of the country. 
That is why no country will make a joke or a mistake of mishandling it is youth, except if this country is ever ready to cruise toward what it is doing. Otherwise, you will never joke with this segment of the society. All the segment of the population in the society are important. No segment is unimportant, but that critical section, the youth, is the most important of all of them. Why? Because they are the bridge builders between the past and the future in any society. Without sound and productive youth, as rightly observed by my elder brother, Dr. Sani Akubu Gombe, then there will be no productive society. And thank God, Nigeria is one of the blessed societies with the domineering population of the youth. In fact, the entire world. If you don't know, 42% of the total global population is youth. All over, the world over. And when I say youth, who is a youth? This has many categorizations, compartmentalizations, from the religious perspective, from the institutional dimension, from the academic view, and even from my own personal understanding of Nigerian society. For instance, according to the United Nations, a youth is somebody from the age of 18 to 25. So by this definition, even I myself is now excluded from this category. But from the religious perspective, take Islam for example, a youth is somebody from the age of poverty, no limit. Whether you become mature from the age of 13, 14, 15, once you reach an adolescent age, from any age, then you are still youth up to 40 years. Hatta iza balaga ashuttahu wa balaga arba ina sanata. Until you reach the age of 40 years, you are still youth. In fact, if you reach 40 years, that is when you reach the peak of your youth. And from the biblical view, although there is no peak age like from the Quran, but still if you look at some books like Jeremiah, Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, and others, it is being mentioned that a youth is somebody that is energetic and active segment of the society, meaning that it is still within that age. If you come down to Nigeria, for example, about 56% of the population is from the age 18 to 25. In fact, in the 2019 general election, 51.1% of the total voters consists of those from the age of 18 to 34 only. 51% of the voters. If you extend it to 40, it will constitute about 65% of voters. And what is the interpretation of this? Simple, that if youth determine and decide that no any septuagenarian or octogenarian will ever rule this country, then it will be so. At 60% of the total vote, who will defeat you? If you decided to be social media influencers,